Hello, my name's Ben. And my name's Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to be going into my current FPL draft, talking about a little bit about some of my players and uh, the potential plans going forward. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so to talk about the defence first, in goal we've gone with David Raya. At the moment, he's the cheapest priced Arsenal defender to bring in that's nailed on to start. So that's why I've got him in. The decision really was to go with him or someone like Saliba for 0.5 more. At the moment, I've gone with Raya, although that could potentially change, of course, over pre-season. Decent fixtures to start the year as well. So I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. The back three is the dream rotation of teams. Newcastle, Palace and Villa have a great rotation between the three of them. At the moment, it's Dan Byrne. If Trippier goes off to uh, Saudi and we end up seeing someone like Hall or Livramento potentially getting the nod um, at left or right back, then I'd immediately go to one of those guys. Uh, I think the attacking potential is really good from the fullbacks at Newcastle. We saw it last season. I don't think there's any coincidence that Trippier got so many attacking returns. Anderson in there as well. In terms of sort of the choice between him and Gay, I went for the one with a bit more attacking threat. And of course, Konza in there as well. The rotation between those three teams are excellent. Um, so I'm really happy with that. In terms of the, the bench defenders and keeper, Turner's just in there at a 4 million keeper until we have a breakout one that potentially gets some minutes. Barco of Brighton is really exciting. His ownership is starting to rise a little bit more. He's at 5%. When uh, he first went in my team, he's just at 2%. So people are waking up to the thought that he will potentially be the starting left wing back for Brighton in a really attacking team, albeit some tough fixtures. And then at the moment, I've got Anthony Robinson in there as well. Difficult opening fixture, but the following two after that are fantastic. And in terms of attacking returns, really good. He got one that's won the most points out of any 4.5 million defenders last season. So yeah, that's the defence. Josh, what are your initial thoughts? Yeah, really like the Raya pick. I think for 5.5, like you say, cheapest route into that defence, covers your Arsenal defence in terms of like the EO that I know a lot of people are worried about with the likes of Saliba. I think he's at like 40% owned or something stupid like that in the minute. Um, and it also steers you clear of any sort of rotation risk, whether that be for Calafuri, Timber, Gabriel, whoever it is who plays in that back four. So I think that's really good. Uh, as you mentioned, obviously the, those four defenders with Robertson included rotate really, really nicely. So yeah, have no issues with those. Obviously they are all really cheap and the only major defence that you, you're covering with those is obviously Arsenal. So City, even Liverpool who finished third in terms of expected goals conceded. You're not covering those two at the moment. But I think those four defences, barring maybe Newcastle, um, are decent defences like I think Crystal Palace was like fourth last season in terms of expected goals conceded under Oliver Glasner so a really solid defence for a really cheap price Okay so moving on into the midfield and one of my favourite players at the moment is Brennan Johnson at 6.5 million got a decent amount of attacking returns last season had a high XG um, last season and a relatively low XA but got loads of assists and not too many goals so we'll see what happens this season I think he can have a breakout year the first two fixtures are really good and if we sort of don't see too many returns he should be a pretty easy one to move on and move on to another 6.5 million there's so many options at that price point that it's silly not to go with at least one of them we've got Erdegaard in there as my Arsenal coverage in terms of attack we could potentially look at someone like Kai Havertz and change the structure up a little bit um, in terms of sort of price point if I'm going to be having two premiums in my team I can't really afford to go for a third one in Bakayo Saka so at the moment Erdegaard is in there his underlying stats are pretty decent as well Gordon has been in my team from the get-go he's been the first player in and won't leave before the start of the season unless he gets injured just fantastic value at 7.5 million Salah's in there at the moment as well as my first premium to talk about. The fixtures for Liverpool are some of the best in the league. And uh, Salah got an assist in pre-season. Played pretty wide, but let's see how sort of slot sort of moves his system forward and whether Salah's positioning changes a little bit in future games to come. And then Alanga at 5.5 million is my favourite budget option in terms of midfielders. Potentially a breakout year for him as well. He's, he sort of had his uh, first season at Forest. Let's see if he can really kick on. Josh, what are the thoughts on the midfield? Yeah, like a lot of these picks, obviously, Brennan Johnson, really, really good pre-season so far. He picked up an assist, um, got like a pass to an assist as well. So he's involved a lot in the big decisive moments for Spurs, which is what you want from someone at that price point. And I think 
if we're lucky, we can he can sort of match the likes of maybe a James Madison or a Kulosevsky to start the season off with those two opening really good fixtures. And Mo Salah as well, obviously a fantastic option. And to get two premiums in there, you are going to have to compensate elsewhere. That's why those £4.5 million defenders are in defence. I do like the Alanga shout at £5.5 million and is obviously a really interchangeable price point where there's a lot of different options that you can pick up for the different fixture runs going forward. So yeah, overall, really nice midfield. Okay, and moving on into my forwards, I've got a front two that will probably be fairly template by the start of the season. We've got Alexander Izak and Erling Haaland, with Izak being 55% owned and Haaland only being 35% owned at the time of recording. I'm really happy with these front two. I don't think, again, it's going to change before the start of the season with these guys. The core is fairly settled in terms of my team, and it's just sort of those little decisions that I've really got to make, which is a really good position to be in. Haaland averaging 250 points a season why wouldn't I go with him like he's even the potential captaincy option at Chelsea away like we could see we could see City go crazy there like you just never know and Isaac has a potentially another captaincy option as well for the start of the season on the bench we got Le, Le Dapo and he's just a 4.5 million bench fodder option that you know he's going to sit third on my bench for all the time that he's in my team so not too worried about that Josh what are your thoughts on the strike force and then the overall structure of the team yeah, obviously, same strike force that I have at the moment as well. Um, Isaac, really highly owned. And then for me, Erling Haaland is just so criminally under owned. To think that he will still be not necessarily a differential, but you'll gain really decent rank even if you don't captain him at the moment. I just think that's really crazy to say considering every season that he's been in the Premier League so far, he's literally been over 100% effectively owned pretty much all the time. Um, so yeah, really nice options, both of them. I think the structure is really decent considering you've got both premiums in there. Obviously, you know, 27, 27 and a half million pounds on just two players is a lot of budget to go. But as you mentioned, with the consistency of both of them, it could be worth it if you nail those players around them. Okay then, so that is Ben's current FPL draft. Let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. Do you think going Salah and Haaland is a bit overkill or do you think that that's the way to go to get those two big premium boys in the team? And as always, please remember to like, comment and subscribe to the FPL graduates. I've been Ben. I've been Josh. We'll see you guys. Later. Have a good preseason, everyone. So you may rise, but you'll never make me want